All right, we are back here in the whiskey lair. Today, I am going to share with you one of my favorite distillers, which is Kleinleach. Uh, but in particular, uh, we're gonna be looking at the single cast nation Kleinleach 23 year old cast strength. Before we start talking about this particular bottling, I wanted to talk about Kleinleach as a whole. Uh, Kleinleach is one of my favorite distilleries because it epitomizes one of the sort of most fun aspects of single malt scotch, uh, which is Kleinleach has very distinct signature. And when I talk about signature, I'm talking about the characteristics that are consistent uh, no matter what expression uh, given a certain distillery. So basically, these distilleries, because of their distilling regimen, the size and shape of the stills, all of these different aspects about the distillation process at this particular single malt distillery, uh, they end up producing unique characteristics that are consistent uh, from one expression to the next, which is really exciting. It's kind of like, uh, it's like having the opportunity to listen to a bunch of di different renditions of your favorite song or a bunch of uh, different versions of your favorite dish. Uh, it's, it's really quite exciting. When we look at Kleinleach, what's unique about it is this waxy mouthfeel that Kleinleach tends to have. And the, the way Kleinleach gets that waxy mouthfeel is actually uh, really just this interesting idiosyncrasy in the distillation process. This one little difference produces this unique quality that basically has sprung this entire cult whiskey following around the Kleinleach distillery. Uh, so when we talk about the distillation process at Kleinleach, you're going to look at a double distillation. And whenever you have a double distillation, Basically, you're taking a distiller's beer, you're putting it in the first still, which is called the wash still, uh, and the wash still produces low wines, um, and it raises the alcohol by volume from about 8% to 23% alcohol. Uh, that, that liquid that is captured that is 23% alcohol by volume, uh, that's called the low wines. Uh, you take the low wines, you put it in the second still called the spirit still, and you run it again. This is double distillation. Uh, but when you're doing that second run, you're not keeping everything that comes off the still, right? You're, you're separating out what's called the heart cut. So the first stuff that comes off the still is the four shots. Uh, we, don't, we don't put that in cask and drink it. Um, the next stuff that comes off the still is the heart cut. It's purely, it's, it's, it's mostly ethanol. Um, and that is what's gonna end up going into cask and age into single malt. The last part of the run, which is the majority of the run, is called the feints. So you have four shots, the heart cut, and then the feints, right? Um, so we're not essentially keeping the four shot and the feints. We're keeping the heart cut, and that's gonna be watered down to uh, filling strength, that that's gonna be put in the cask, and that's gonna be what's aged. However, we don't throw out the four shot and the feints. Uh, and so most distillers, what they do is, they take the four shots and the feints, they trap them, and then they put them back into the spirit still with the low wines from the subsequent run. So basically, you run the still, you get your low wines, and then you take the four shots and the feints from the previous one run, you mix it with the low wines, and that's what goes into the spirits to, the, the spirit still. Uh, so it's a little more complicated than just running the still and getting whatever you get. Um, what's unique about Kleinleach is at pretty much every distillery, the four shots and the feints are stored in the same receiver as the low lines. Uh, what Kleinleach has is actually a separate receiver for the low lines and a separate receiver for the four shots and the feints. And while the four shots and the feints are sitting in that separate receiver, they actually start to uh, they start to get really gunky and produce this, this literally this gunk, this wax. Uh, and with that being sort of reintroduced into the spirit still every single run, you end up with this final product that has this really unique waxiness to it. Um, and it's just a weird little idiosyncrasy that's unique to Kleinleach, but the result is this really lovely, lovely texture that everybody who, who is sort of one of these big followers of Kleinleach uh, gets, gets kind of obsessed with, uh, my, myself included. Uh, so 
What's fun about Kleinleash is it has this signature, um, but Diageo, which owns Kleinleash, only really releases a 14-year-old. So most of the expressions that you're having are from what are called independent bottlers, right? There are these companies that are finding casks of whiskey. They're bottling it as Kleinleash, as a single malt, but they're doing it under their own name. And what you usually get with independent bottlers is you're seeing sort of the, the most deviant away from the standard product. You're seeing all of these unique flavors because a lot of independent bottlers will, uh, they'll recast the whiskey, they'll put it into a different type of barrel, uh, they'll do all these different things to affect the flavor uh, and get a unique expression of a given distillery. Uh, the, the whiskey we're looking at today is from Single Cask Nation. And Single Cast Nation is an independent bottler that was founded by Joshua Hatton and Jason Johnston Yellen. Josh Hatton has never really been afraid of uh, bottling whiskeys at um, uncommon ages in different types of casks. Um, the, the Single Cast Nation is a company that has always done sort of a lot of these off the beaten path distilleries. Uh, they released a five-year-old Laphroaig, which is one of my favorite Laphroaigs of all time. Uh, most companies don't don't really have the moxie to actually uh, bottle something at five years old and then put the five-year on the label itself. Uh, they, they basically have just catered to a whiskey market that really likes to explore the diversity of the category. Uh, and this Klein Leash is no exception. Uh, this Klein Leash 23 year is cast strength is 52.4% alcohol by volume. Believe it or not, this is a, uh, this actually was aged in a second fill Oloroso sherry, but uh, I, that the label is kind of, the label is kind of uh, blocking the bottle right now. So I have my backup bottle. Allie, give me my backup bottle. This is my backup bottle, so you can really see the color. I haven't opened this one or the other six of these that I own. Uh, this this color, though, you just this is natural color. You just rarely see this um, in a second fill cask. It just really is quite extractive, um, and it really is quite lovely. So let's give it a taste. So right off the bat, as soon as you nose it, uh, I, if somebody gave this to me blind, I think I'd probably guess it was Glendronic, actually. It's got that big, robust, jammy note. This is aged in Oloroso sherry butts as opposed to Pedro Jimenez casks. Uh, Oloroso sherry butts tend to produce more of those dry, nutty characteristics and a little bit less of that uh, sherry sweetness, some of that sort of sugary sweetness that you tend to get from PX casks. This particular expression is really jammy. Uh, I get like a lot of blueberry jam and a lot of nuttiness to it. It's definitely dry. It's raisiny. It's apricotty. It's that sort of classic overaged uh, Spanish oak sherry cask style. And then just like a, an entire spice rack dumped into it. Mm, the palate's where it's at with this. You gotta be careful. You, you, you're you really inclined to gulp this to really experience the whole mouthfeel. Uh, and at 52.4% alcohol by volume, it, you would expect it to be a little a little hotter and a little harsher than it is. It, it is unbelievably clean. It's totally mouth coating. Um, it's almost like a sticky candy. Um, and I get, I get a little bit of like candy corn it's really, really nice. You do get the waxiness. It's a little dialed back. Uh, I think it's just because that Spanish oak is is doing so much from a tannic standpoint. You're you're really experiencing a lot of the the dryness on the sides of the palate, uh, but it does have that those oils and that that like really, really resinous finish where it just sits on your palate forever and ever. It's really something else. All right, let's try adding a little water. Hmm. Wow. 
water brings out more of the fruit and the florality. It dials down that, that resinous, that drying, uh, cloyingness that you get from sherry cast that, that sort of, uh, like a, like a, an old Bordeaux would kind of dry out the side of your palate. And instead you get more of those sort of, uh, sweet fruit notes and, um, a little, a little tiny bit of sulfur starts to come out. Uh, sulfur is, sulfur is a weighted term. Uh, there are a bunch of different types of sulfur and they manifest in, in a bunch of different flavor, uh, compounds. And, and, and sometimes you'll get that, the, the sort of, um, the stewed vegetables or that burnt rubber, which I find very unpleasant. Um, but sometimes you'll just get that gentle struck match. Some people don't like it. I, I like it. Um, I like just the right amount of it. Uh, this is just the faintest whiff of it. Mm. And on the palate, you start to get ooh, a lot more of the sweetness, um, a lot more of the raisin where you bite it and you can you get all of that like condensed sugar buildup. It's really... It's really delightful. So once again, thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope you get a chance to try this. Uh, I hope you get, I hope you get your hands on as much clean as you can. It is absolutely delightful. And uh, stay safe. And thanks. Cheers. <laughs> no, have you tried this one yet? This is cheating. It tells you on the back of the bottle what the floral notes are. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things they do. I love that. They actually show the profile. So you know what the hell you're drinking. You know the Serge Valentin? Who's well, they should put it like under a tab that you like peel away. So you have to at least try and figure it out. <laughs> I'll tell Josh. We'll, we'll, we'll inform him. He needs to find some way to do it. You need to find some way to do it. It needs to be tasting. a peekaboo. A peekaboo. Where you taste it and then you peel it. That's actually out. a cool, that's a cool idea. I don't, I don't think the TTB would approve. The what? <laughs> the guys who, who regulate labeling. The feds. Why would they not approve of a peekaboo? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't approve of a peekaboo. They put them on medicine. They put them on medicine. Have you tried this yet? No. Can I pause it now? No. Oh my god. Sorry, Phil. I'm sorry, Phil. You worked so hard. You this felt one's like for you. This one's for you. Cheers. <laughs> what do you get? A little wombat? Sniffing. A sniff away. I like your candy corn reference. Yeah, candy corn sounds funny. Yeah. It's hard to do it once I, I like I, listen to you talk through all of your notes. I've heard Josh taste Dr. Pepper on things. He's got the most legendary tasting notes. Uh, there's this famous story about where he, right, right after he had a kid, he, 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 he on his blog he describes somebody's whiskey as having um, uh, baby like breath, baby vomit. No, like the like oh my baby God. vomit. <laughs> And he posted it on his blog, not knowing that the uh, the guy who actually distilled the stuff was a follower. <laughs> that that blew up. That was really funny. It ended up fine, but it was hilarious. Uh, yeah, we're talking to Josh on Friday. Oh baby, I'm excited. I am excited for our live stream. Oh, that's right. You said. That. No, no. no, no. All right, give it a little nose. What do you get on the note? Whiskey. <laughs> 